On the mid-north coast of New South Wales, Australia, there is a sleepy surf town called Bonnie Hills, and almost smack bang on the beach is a surf repair and restoration shop called Nico's. It's run downstairs at the bottom of his house, and Nico does some amazing work restoring old boards for collectors. I decided to drop around and visit Nico and show you some of the boards that he has and some of the work that he's doing in restoration on these beautiful old boards. What are you doing there, Nico? So uh, this is a 19, 1969 McCoy double ender. It was gifted to me by a fellow that lives around the back. And it was in very, very poor condition. So it's had all the original damaged fiberglass removed and the blank's been repaired um, with fresh foam in several places and then it's been re-glassed and the re new logos and new artwork and the original fin will be refurbished and fitted so it will hopefully look like it did when it left the factory in 1969. So you said it's a double ender, which is like a, what we call eggs, I guess, as well. Yes, so this model that he made, um, I get the information from Jeff's McCoy's website, webpage, and he has photos of this very board, or not this particular board, but this board. Um, and they called it, yeah, they called it a double ender. It's what they also call an S deck. You can see the S shape in the deck. And it's, this is the model prior to them introducing the laser zap, which had the, the loaded dome bottom in it. This one is a traditional straight um, flat bottom. And a very large, they had a very large fin. Um, they hadn't really figured out how to do fins properly in those days. So. Yeah, have you got the original fin for it, or you probably put a different fin on it? That'd be great. It is set into the board um, and then glassed on. But um, that fin was probably one third bigger than the uh, current fin that would be in a board that size. Um, yeah, so, so that's the original Greeno fin. It's in quite good condition and that should be stored up nicely for me to... Um, can you just hold it in front of you so we can have a bit of a look at it? It's a really upright vertical fin, isn't it? Very upright fin, which gives them a lot of pivot. Right. Um, so the more sweeping the fin, the more drivey they are, and the more drawn out the turns will be. But these more vertical fins go from a more pivot. The board itself is uh, only 6.1, which they went very, very short there for a while. In fact, there's boards around here from that period that are much shorter than this even. So, yep, that was the direction they were going at that stage so it's just had it's been laminated and it's had the filler coat put on so the filler coat goes on over the fiberglass cloth to fill up the weave in the cloth so the fiberglass this is what's called four ounce it just looks like that and that that goes invisible once the resin hits it but it does leave the weave um, pattern in the, the resin so that has to be filled up with a filler coat which also gives you um, a surface to sand into to level all these little imperfections out that come out in the resin. Okay you've got a board in the roof there that I saw that's like yeah sort of had some fiberglass stripped off it. Yep. Can we have a look at that? Do you want just to get down and have a look? People can see yeah basically where what they look just like when they're about halfway through. Alright well you're going to get my ladder here. Maybe whack it on the rack, I reckon. What type of board is this? So this board um, has had the fiberglass stripped off it already. Um, this is a board by Hawaiian Reno Abalira. You can see the remnants of the old logo on there. It had a lot of um, red graphics that will be replicated. Um, you can see it's in very, 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 very poor condition on the back of the board here you can see this is the old fiberglass this will give you an indication of what sort of condition the, the board was in when it came here before I stripped the glass off it to um, hopefully this will come up much in similar condition to the McCoy so this damage here that you can see 
is where cracks and splits in the fiberglass have let water in and believe it or not this is where water has um, been seeping between the fiberglass on the foam over the last 30 or 40 years and when you take the fiberglass off these boards this area is often still wet it never comes out and you can see it's almost green like algae and, and that, that is obviously that is virtually impossible to repair without taking the fiberglass off or painting over it but here you can see where this damage is here that it's actually quite graphic where the fin was taken out underneath this stained yellow color that's water stain that's what you're saying right some of it is this stuff is water stain this other stuff is stained from the fiberglass which is affected by uv light and it goes really brown uh, we've got a couple of boards there once it's gone brown it gets very very brittle and uh, virtually impossible to repair and surf because it just cracks and lets more water into the blank so I've got to reshape these in. So we're saying it's a Reno Avalera, so explain. He's a Hawaiian legend, isn't he, right? He is a From Hawaiian legend. From the single legend. fin era. So these, these shapes of boards, and this is a very popular shape in the early 70s and on through most of the middle part of the 70s as well, came from Hawaii where the waves are bigger and they needed to control the speed of the board Hence they were teardrop shaped and very narrow in the tail. They never really worked as well in Australia where the waves are much smaller and often beach breaks. Um, maybe at Bells and, and uh, Margaret River where the waves were a bit bigger. But these flutes, um, these are experimenting with things like this trying to stop the board from sliding out. Because the rails were soft and rounded and they gave these little flutes in here to, to make them bite. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of stability and hold in the in the, in the heavy power and then yeah. we sort of got Mark Richards come along and goes well we'll just put a twin fin into 10 well, foot sunset. Well of course Mark didn't invent the twin fin, he received a twin fin, um, he saw... From a Hawaiian wasn't it? Yeah, from uh, the, the twin fin came from Hawaii and he had a go on, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he had a guy a, a go on a board and loved it and bought the board off him. I think it might have been he saw a Reno surfing one. Maybe, maybe it was Reno like that, that rode the board, but um, mm. so the MR20 was born from that and, and Mark Richards refined the board that he'd had and um, in fact he won all four, four world titles on the same board, which was the first one he ever made. Yeah, you've got one there, can we have a look at that? I've got two here, um, these are fairly late versions. Get them on the rack if we can, a little bit. This is a... Um, this is a very, very traditional MR. What model's that one? Well, it's called the Retro Twin, so it's actually no. not that old, I don't think. But it comes off the 78 or something yeah. like that. But it, it, has, it has that fluted rail where the flyer is here. So Mark was um, credited with having this, the tip of the fin lined up with the edge of the flyer, which gives him a pivot point which obviously you didn't get with a single fin, you had nothing to pivot with a single one. You could put as many flies as you like, but with the fin there and the flyer there with the board suddenly gets dramatically narrower. Um, it gives you a pivot point, especially off the top of the wave. And so the bottom turn was very important on a single fin, but it Mark allowed the top turn to become much more influential. So this little board is a very, very nice um, hot stuff. Um, Rabbit Bartholomew model came out of Queensland in about 1975. It's having a full restoration. The skin, here's the skin, some of the skin off this board. Um, the issue for me is that this outline that I've cut out here is the graphic that's got to go onto this board. So this blue and the orange have all got to be resprayed on the board. And the logo. I've already re-imaged re the logo. Um, that's what tells me what year it is because in subsequent years they changed this font and they got um, a letter from Warner Brothers about continuing that logo. 
This is the Hot Stuff logo which goes on the bottom of the board. It doesn't have any graphics, just the, the single Hot Stuff. I do a spare in case I mess it up in some way. Um, it takes quite a long time to re-image some of these, these logos. So you can see what I had to work with there. Um, not a lot to work with, but that's okay. It's all part of the, all part of the scheme. So the board itself has had a lot of work done to this blank. Um, you can see there's this new foam in different places. You can see some foam put in here. It's had another big fin chop here. Whole piece in the tail, etc., etc. Et so there's a lot of work in getting the blank to that stage. And then, of course, um, we've got the graphics to go on there. And then finally, it'll get another layer of um, six ounce glass to finish it up. I do have the original fin with this board, it's one of the early ones that has a fin box. Very few boards had fin box in those days, but I presume Rabbit was using that to his advantage. So yeah, that's the Rabbit. So I usually have two or three boards going at the one time, so one will be drying while the other one's curing and etc etc. But this graphic side of this is very time consuming. I'll probably spend two or three days just masking up, getting ready to um, put one colour on and then another couple of days masking up for the next one. Because, um, believe it or not, people that like vintage surfboards like them to be as close to original as possible, so something you can't mess up. Um, so this little emerald board came in the other day um, to be restored. And there's a few bring, little repairs. Bring it it's, a bit closer, Nico. It is, it is tiny. Uh, oh. It is 5'4". Uh, probably, um, I would say, very early 80s, but yeah, it's not in bad condition, but it probably needs a lot more work than you actually think it does. So that's a pretty interesting one. Lightning Bolt by Jerry Lopez. It's called Pocket Rocket for some reason. It's a seven foot, very gun Hawaiian shaped. Not vintage, I don't think, but the owner wants it restored. Uh, this is a old surfboard that's been cut down and it's being re remade into a classic shaped single fin. Um, obviously it's an old blank, it has probably a redwood stringer, um, but it's now being refurnished into a modern version of the old, old single fins. It's a very modern firewire. It's an NI twin fin, seven foot. Decks all collapsed, but this board's going to be going on the wall. The owner of this board is uh, a collector. He owns the other MR we we're looking at. Yeah, a different MR, two different MRs. This one's a, a um, retro one. Yeah. This one's a more modern one. Of course, they're very, very similar. This one doesn't have the flutes. Um, but yeah, classic, it's going to be restored. This board's in for a major restoration. What board is this, did you say? A midget Farrelly. This is what they called a pop-out in the day, and if you look very closely here, you can see they've stamped the number on it. It says 1,727. Wow. So he was a Australian world champion. He was the very Australian first champion world champion. Or first world champion. Now I'm negotiating with the owner of this board because I want to take this damaged skin off and re-glass it. But he doesn't want me to. But I did point out to him that it's taking itself off anyway. As you can see, it's delaminating. So much of it's delaminated, so difficult to repair. But anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. This is a customer's repair that he put his heel through. This is a um, modern shortboard that's had a new tail put in it where the leg rope decided to try and cut the tail off. This is an Aloha. Um, good, famous brand from Hawaii. The original shaper's name is on here. And that's in to be completely restored. So it's going to get stripped. I'll probably make three new fins and re-glass those on. You can see how what I have to do with these cords. <laughs> so let's skin it and it off like that. <laughs> Gnarly. Yeah. So there's a fair amount of work in there. This board was bought new in the 1980s. 
um, from local shaper Ian Goodacre. And it's, it's in incredible condition. It's a, it's a goodie. It's a goodie. Before he started calling himself Goody, I believe. Yeah. It's in very, very, very good condition. Um, it has belly channels in here, fixed fins. So I'm thinking um, probably mid 80s. I could probably go to take this down and see Goody and get him to tell me. It does have a number on it down here somewhere. Mm, looks 80s. Yeah. But that, that board is going to be restored back to brand new and hung on the wall of the owner who bought it in the 80s. Jeez, I'd almost want to surf that one. Yeah. Yes, it's definitely surfable. It only needs a few little waterproofing. It's got a little chop there and another one on the deck here. But apart from that, it's the tail needs some bit of work. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all the boards with us and your knowledge. And um, yeah, if you want to come and get a restoration from Nico at Bonnie Hills, He's booked out, but um, we've given him a ring, and so you can look him up. How do people find you, mate, if they want to? The most easiest way is to go to my Instagram page, Nico's Restos. Nico's Restos. Nico's underscore Restos. Send me a message. Awesome. Say g'day. If right. you have a look on that page, there, there is over a thousand surfboards on there. Not all restorations, uh, but there's a lot of... Um, most of the work that I do is blogged on there. There'll be before and after photos and a few halfway through photos so they can have a look and see how things are done. Awesome, thanks mate, much appreciated.